as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. On you huskies! Yes, think of traveling for hours and hours, as Sergeant Preston does, behind a team of huskies along the Yukon Trail through blinding blizzards and storms. Believe me, you'd want to start out with a nourishing He-Man breakfast, the kind that includes a heaping bowl full of nutritious, crisp, Quaker-popped wheat or Quaker-popped rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. Remember, in these famous cereals shot from guns, you get extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. For a nourishing dish that's always a treat, enjoy Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Tom Leeton and his older brother Frank had come to the Yukon Territory during the first year of the gold rush and had staked a claim outside of Selkirk. Frank, who was 31, was 10 years older than Tom, and since the death of their parents a few years before, Frank had looked after his younger brother as best he could. The first year, they had netted several thousand dollars from their claim, and Frank had opened a joint account at the bank so that the funds were available to either of them. During the winter that followed, Tom, with plenty of time on his hands, had begun to spend a great deal of it at the cafe. One spring day, Frank went to the bank and approached the cashier. Why, hello there, Frank. Well, I guess you're all set to work your claim again now that the thaw is here. That's right, Mr. Davis. But this season, we're going to go at it differently. That is, on a bigger scale. Good, good. Hope you have lots of luck. Thanks. Now look, I got the Dawson City newspaper in the mail that came through this morning. Yeah. There's a company advertising some kind of new mining equipment that they bring in from the States. I'd like to arrange to have you send a draft for $4,000 to them. I'll give you an order to go along with it. 4000 you say? That's right. <laughs> well, the close to 7000 Tom and I have in our account ought to be good for a draft of that amount. Hmm. Yeah. When have you had a statement last on your account, Frank? Last month, before I went to Whitehorse. I just got back yesterday. Well, I happened to check your account just before you came in, Frank. Comes to only $4,100. Well, there must be some mistake. No, there's no mistake. If you send that draft, it'll leave you with a balance of only 100 Wait a minute. There's something wrong someplace. No, there isn't. Your brother Tom has withdrawn well over 2000 during the past month. Tom did? That's right. He drew several hundred at a time. I hate to say this, Frank, but... I hear Tom's been doing a lot of gambling lately at the cafe. He took out 200 about two hours ago. Sorry to tell you, but... I'm glad you did, Mr. Davis. Thanks. Forget about making out that draft for the time being. I'll go find Tom and have a talk with him. Well, so long, Frank, and come in again. Meantime, in the cafe, Tom Leeton sat at one of the tables with two men, Slick Weston and Ollie Miles. They had been playing cards... And as Slick put down a poker hand, he laughed and spoke. <laughs> this has your beat, Tom. Better luck next time. Ah, doggone it, I never seem to win. Uh, don't give up trying, Tom. Slick just happens to get the right cards, that's all. Uh-oh. Here comes that big brother of yours. Stick up for your rights, kid. Don't let him tell you what to do. Tom, I want to talk to you. Come on out of here and let's go home. I'm not ready to go yet. I don't care whether you're ready to go or not. You come with me right now. Well, I... Nothing like having a nursemaid to tell you what to do, eh, Ollie? <laughs> That's right. Get out of here and let me alone, <laughs> Frank. 
sick of having you tell me what to do. Yeah. I'll stay here till I get good and ready to leave. I said you're coming now. Hey, hey, let go of me. I said let go. I can't let you get away with that. Oh. Sorry I had to do that, Tom. Let me help you up, and then we'll go Keep your hands off me, you hear? Take it easy, Tom. Come to your senses. Don't let him push you around, Tom. He's pushed me around for the last time. You'll be sorry for this, Frank. Plenty sorry. All right, Tom. You're old enough to go your own way now. You're doggone right I am. Since that seems to be the way you want it, I'm pulling up stakes and clearing out. You've used up practically all your share of the bank money. You're going to have the cabin and claim... But I'm taking my share of 3500 out of the bank and heading for Whitehorse. That'll leave you about 600 to lose at cards to your slick gambler friends. Goodbye, Tom. Good luck. <laughs> oh, I, I... I can't let Frank walk out. I guess I lost my head. I you better... did just the right thing, Tom. Didn't he, Ollie? Well, sure. It's about time you got out from under his boss, and Tom. You're a man now. Hey, waiter, bring some drinks over here. Oh, no, look, maybe I'd better uh, go. Sit down, Tom. We'll celebrate your freedom. Sit down. Sure. Well, all right. Frank said he's going to stop at the bank to get that money. Then he'd go home to pack. I reckon I can get out there before he's ready. Why, of course. Eat. Come on, waiter, come on. Hurry up with those drinks now. After buying Tom Leeton more drinks, Slick and Dolly slyly aroused his anger once more against his brother Frank. Too bad a nice, ambitious young fella like you has to take orders from someone like Frank. Uh, yeah, that's right. You're used to being pushed around, but there's no reason why you have to take it any longer. I'm not going to be pushed around any longer. That's a spirit, fella. You ought to go out there to the cabin and tell him off before he leaves. Sure, that's what you ought to do, Tom. Tell him you're no longer a kid, and if you ever get together again, you won't take any bossing. Yeah. We're just advising you as good friends. Sure, as good friends, both of you. I'll tell him, you can bet. Right now, I'm going to go home and tell him. Yeah. We'll get you to your horse and help you on, Tom. Then you'll be able to make it all right to your cabin. Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah, Take it easy, way. Tom. Come on, you're going to be all right. Leaving the cafe, the two men helped the befuddled Tom into the saddle. As he rode away at a slow pace, they quickly mounted their own horses and under cover of the gathering dusk, rode between the buildings and then along the back way so as to reach the trail before Tom did. It was almost two hours later when an excited prospector entered the constable's office where Sergeant Preston, who had arrived in town a short time before, was checking reports with the constable. Constable, something's happened at the Leeton cabin up trail. What's the matter up there, Jake? Looks like a plain case of murder to me. What gives you that idea, Jake? Oh, hi, Sergeant. Reckon you and the constable have a job to do. I'm sure Frank Leeton's dead. Frank Leeton? Yeah. My cabin's a short distance beyond the Leeton place, you know. Yes, and I, I know. Go on. I was coming to town. And I saw the light in the Leeton cabin, so I stopped to say howdy like I do sometimes. Yes, then what? The Leeton boys' two horses were standing out front, and seeing the door slightly open, I looked in. Well? The young one, Tom, was sitting on a chair near the table in sort of a daze, looking at something on the floor. I started in, then stopped when I saw he was staring at Frank's body lying there. I saw a gun on the table near where Tom was sitting. That's bad. Yes. What did Tom have to say, Jake? Not a word. He must have heard me, but he didn't look my way or say a thing. Huh? Just sat there staring. I hightailed it out of there and hit the trail for here pronto. Guess I better get right out there. Yes, and I'll go with you, Bill. Uh, what do you want me to do, Sergeant? Stick here in town till we get back and keep your mouth shut, Yeah, Jake. sure. Whatever you say. Let's go, Bill. Hello there, King. Oh, come on, King. <laughs> steady, steady, Blackie. Get, get in there. <laughs> A short time later, the two Mounties arrived at the Leeton cabin and dismounted. Hold on, hold on. Easy. Steady. Evidently, the prospector had closed the cabin door when he left. But without waiting to knock, the two Mounties, followed by the great dog King, opened the door and entered. Tom Leeton was still there, seated near the table, with his head pillowed on his arm. At the sound of the closing door, he raised his head, and for a brief moment, stared dazedly at the two Mounties who stood before him. Then understanding came into his eyes, and a break came into his voice as he spoke. Oh. Sergeant Preston, I'm glad to see you. Frank, Frank, he's dead. Yes. Yes, he is, Tom. <laughs> Shot in the back. There's a gun on the table. Guess this is the murder weapon, Sergeant. <laughs> hmm. 
One bullet fired. <laughs> what happened, Tom? I, I don't know, Sergeant. Sergeant Preston and the constable listened intently as Tom told what had happened at the cafe. A look of disbelief crossed the constable's face as Tom talked. When the young man had finished, the constable said, Tom, are you sure you didn't come out here with the intention of keeping Frank from leaving with all that money? No. I admit I was still sore at first, but I... Now, look, constable, you don't think I shot Frank, do you? What I think, one way or the other, doesn't matter right now, Tom. Fact is, circumstances are dead set against you. But I didn't do it. I couldn't. You were angry and you were drinking, Tom. Under those conditions, anything could have happened. No, I... Constable's right, no. Tom. We'll have to take you back and hold you on suspicion of murdering your brother. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, tomorrow morning, you'll go for this family breakfast treat. Crisp, tender, swell-tasting Quaker popped rice or Quaker popped wheat. The ready-to-serve cereal shot from gun. Hey, uh, hold on there, man. What's going on here? Say, who are you? What's all the shooting about? Who, me? Name's Lou. Lumberjack Lou. Oh. Why, everybody along Sergeant Preston's Yukon Trail knows me. I've been knocking around lumber camps on the trail for years. Oh, I see. What brings you here? I just figured to look around, get me some supplies, and head back to camp. Then I heard all this ruckus. Well, Lou, that shooting you heard now was just me explaining about the keenest tasting breakfast ever. Oh? Namely, rice or wheat shot from guns. Huh? You see... We load huge guns with choice, sun-ripened, premium grains of rice or wheat. And then these guns are exploded. Out come big, giant grains, eight times normal size. They're magnified, crispified. Shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. That's why Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat are so good to eat. Well, doggone. And for breakfast, lunch, or supper, all you do is pour out a bowl full right from the package. No cooking. Just add milk or cream and top with your favorite fruit. <laughs> That's for me. And what's more, Quaker Pop rice and Quaker Pop wheat are nourishing. They furnish added health values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Hey, look, man. Where do I get me a couple of packages of this here rice and wheat shot from guns? At the nearest grocery store. And fellas and girls, here's a tip for you, too. Tell Mom that delicious Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat come only in the big Quaker red and blue package. A fine modern package with a sealed inner lining in order to doubly protect the flavor and crispness until it hits your table. That's why the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. <laughs> Now to continue. Sergeant Preston and the constable took Tom to jail. Then, suggesting that the constable check on Tom's story in town, the sergeant went back to the scene of the crime with the coroner. Preston spent a short time inspecting the cabin before they brought the murdered man back to Selkirk. Later that night, the two Mounties were discussing the case in the constable's office. It looks bad for Tom, Sergeant. The men at the cafe say he threatened Frank after Frank knocked him down. He said Frank would be sorry for what he did. Plenty sorry. That doesn't help the look of things. Tom was all right until he got mixed up with a couple of men at the cafe. Slick Weston and Ollie Miles. A couple of no-good drifters who came here a little more than a month ago. They egged him on in the argument with Frank today. Huh? I suppose they're the ones who won all that money from Tom. Right, Sergeant. Looking at the facts, it seems Tom went staggering in. Probably started another argument. And Frank turned his back and went on packing. And Tom took the revolver from the table drawer and shot him. Realizing what he'd done, he then sat down in the chair, put the gun on the table, and sat there, stupefied by the shock. Well, that sums it up nicely, Bill, except for one thing. What's that? This. Bullet? What? I don't get this. The coroner probed for and found the bullet that killed Frank Leeton. This bullet is one I dug out of the wall beyond the bunk where Frank was packing. But only one shot was fired from the revolver on the table. Yes, I know him. But after I found this slug in the wall, I got the idea that someone could have sneaked open the door and shot, as I said before. I took a lantern and went outside. 
After a short search, I found these two empty shells. Holy smoke. I figured the killer might reload as he left, which he seems to have done, tossing the shells aside. Then you don't think Tom shot Frank at all, huh? Not with a gun on the table, Bill. The bullets in that are 32s. These shells are 45. It's my theory that the gun we found had been fired into the air from the doorway and then put on the table before Tom arrived. I say, that just about proves Tom Leeton's innocent, Sergeant. It does, unless Tom was playing a smart game and threw the real murder weapon away somewhere. But why would he leave any gun around? Oh, I was he... just bringing up a point that some ardent prosecutor for the Crown might hit on, though. Actually, I hope to get more direct proof of Tom's innocence by finding the person or persons who did kill Frank. By the way, uh, what'd you find out from the bank? Frank Leeton drew out $3,500 and took it with him. Someone stole that cash. It's easy to see that Frank's pockets had been searched. I know. But everybody in the cafe heard him say he was going to get the money. That's right. But in my mind, the two men who were with Tom were the most likely suspects, Bill. I admit neither Weston nor Miles is a very good character, but why single them out? They promoted the fight between the Leeton brothers, and they urged Tom to go out to the cabin to continue the fight. Mm, I, I see what you mean. But you can't just walk up and accuse no, them. No, of course not. But if we could establish the fact that they were at the Leeton cabin... How could you find out? The king could tell us, couldn't you, boy? <laughs> but we'd have to have something belonging to them. Hey, that's easy. The barkeep at the cafe could take a glove from their pocket. They hang out there most all day long. They usually stay there until closing time. I'll go and try to get those gloves for you now. Good. By the way, uh, where do those two men live? In the hotel, right next to the cafe. I'll be back in a little while, Sergeant. Within a short time, the constable returned with one of Slick's gloves and also one of Ollie's. Well, how'd you make out, Bill? I got them. The barkeep says he expects Weston and Miles to be at the cafe for two or three hours yet. Good. Let's take these gloves and go out to the Leeton cabin right now. Come along, Bill. Ready, <laughs> barkeep. Come on, get it there. The two Mollies and the great dog Yukon King headed up the trail, which was brightened by the eerie light of the Yukon night. Meanwhile, in the cafe, Slick rolled a cigarette and then spoke to Ollie. Ollie, give me my yeah. Oh, I guess I'm out, Slick. Never mind. I got some in my coat pocket. I'll go back to the coat rack and get him. Hey. Yeah, that's funny. Hey, Ali, come here a minute. Yeah, sure, sure. What's up, Slick? One of my gloves is missing. I know they were both here, and it isn't on the floor. Well, maybe it did fall. Somebody picked it up and put it in one of my pockets by mistake. Our coats are the only ones hanging here. Now, look. Hey, one of mine is gone too, Slick. That's sure a funny one. I don't like it, Ali. <laughs> nothing to worry about. After all, we can afford to buy new gloves. I've been around the Yukon long enough to learn a thing or two. Remember we heard uh, Sergeant Preston, that dog of his in town? Yeah, but what... A time? short time ago, I saw the constable come in here. I didn't pay much attention to him until I saw him go out. He got those gloves and took them with him. It means only one thing. What's that? That Preston isn't convinced Tom Leeton shot his brother. And he's suspicious of us. What gives you that idea? Our gloves won't... Our gloves would give his dog a scent to follow our scent. If he starts sniffing around at the cabin, he'll bring the Mountie straight back to us. Preston will know we were out there. What are we going to do? Go we'll right out along the trail. If we see him coming back, we'll ambush him. Let's get going right now. At the cabin, King quickly picked up the scent after sniffing the two gloves. Sergeant Preston and the constable rode behind King as he followed the trail. By thunder, Sergeant. Weston and Miles were out there. Yes, this proves it. Let's hurry. King's getting too far ahead of us. Get up, Get up there. Slick and Ollie had gone a short distance along the trail toward the Leeton cabin after making inquiries and finding out definitely that Preston and the constable had gone up the trail. They turned off and rode into a shallow gully about 100 yards back from the trail. There, they pulled to a stop. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. <sighs> They'd be perfect targets against the light of the skyline as they come down the trail, Ollie. Yeah. And this gully is just about deep enough so they can't see the tops of the horses' heads. Yeah, we're in the shadows anyway. They wouldn't notice in this dim light. Get your gun ready. We'll be all set when they show up. All right. Listen. Must be Preston's dog following our trail. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And look, look there. I can see those two mounties coming back along the trail now. Yeah. 
One's riding a little ahead of the other. I'll take the front one. You aim for the one in the back, and don't miss. I'll get set. When they get opposite here, let them have it. Slick had been smart enough to take up their positions so that the slight wind was blowing from the trail toward them. He figured that would keep King from getting their scent from the gully. But Slick forgot one thing. The intelligent dog reached the place where the two crooks had come up the trail a few minutes before and had turned off. It was the same scent he was following, but much fresher and stronger. King stopped, sniffing and whining in puzzlement. A short way up the trail, the two Mounties moved along toward the spot which would be advantageous for Slick and Ollie to shoot them down. Suddenly, Preston quickly pulled to a stop. Oh, Blakey. Hold on, Bill. Whoa, whoa there. What's up? Keep your voice down. Look at King, the way he's acting. He's lost the scent, looks like. No, I'd say he's found the fresher one. Look, King's starting back at an angle, going over toward that gully there. Pull in behind that big boulder on the side of the trail. Hurry, get up, Blakey. Get up, Come on, Blakey. Oh, Blackie, could be mistaken, Bill. Might be the fresh scent of a bear or something that's taken King's attention for the moment. Well, it's very unusual for him to start following one scent and then pick up a different one. Why don't we just ride on and investigate? If by any chance those crooks found out we were trailing them, they might try an ambush. Now, you wait here. I'll circle around through the brush at this end of the gully and see what I can find out. In the gully, Slick and Ollie had their eyes fixed on the approaching Mounties at the time, so they didn't notice when King stopped and then started to follow the fresh scent. They saw the Mounties stop suddenly and then make for the boulders. They went behind that big boulder. You think they... Wait a minute. Look at that dog acting up. Uh, he's going around in a circle, seems like. Are you fool. He's found our fresh scent. He'll trail us here. Keep your eye on that boulder up there. I'll watch the mud. As soon as he gets close enough, I'll plug him. Slick and Ollie waited, ready and tensed for action. After King left the trail, his outline was no longer visible. And Slick had a hard time making out the gray of his figure against the brush as the dog moved toward the gully. Suddenly, Ollie, watching the boulder, saw the constable. Ollie quickly fired. Hey, you fool! Now they know we're here. You take care of them. I gotta get a line on the dog. As the first shot sounded, King, realizing he had found his quarry, barked loudly. Then started on the run toward the gully. Now I see that mutt. Here he comes running. I'll fix him. I got him! Drop those guns! What the? Them hey, one of the Mounties right behind us. I'll get him. Oh, you don't? Oh! How for you? I told you to drop that gun. For a brief moment, the two men struggled for possession of Slick's gun. Then Preston got it and threw it up on the bank. That's that. This is for what you did to my dog. I'll kill you for that. Oh, this will be a pleasure. Slick was as big as Sergeant Preston, but he soon realized the Mountie had muscles of steel, superpowered by his intense anger because of King. Fear filled Slick's mind as he tried to ward off the sledgehammer blows Preston rained upon him. Finally, after a smashing blow to the jaw, Slick went down, groveling. Wait, wait, I'm through. I can't take any more. Get up, I'm not through. No, I can't, I can't breathe. I can't. Hold on, Sergeant. Take it easy. Yeah, get by the oh. dirt where you belong. Sorry, Bill. But when I thought of King... Yeah, I... yeah, I know. I'll watch these two, though they don't need it. Go find King, Sergeant. All right, Bill. Leaving the gully, Sergeant Preston walked with heavy heart to the spot where King lay on the ground. The Mountie knelt beside the still gray dog, and almost afraid to learn the worst, hesitatingly reached down to feel for King's heartbeat. A catch came into Sergeant Preston's voice as he spoke softly. King, King boy, I can't believe. What? <laughs> King, you're not dead. Oh, as his devoted on. master's hand touched him, the great dog raised his massive head. And then, as Preston started to examine him hurriedly, King shakily rose to his feet and with a whine of assurance licked Preston's hand. Oh, thank heaven the bullet just creased you, fella. Bill! Bill, King's all right! Can you walk all right, fella? Come on. Let's go back to the gully, King. Gosh, I'm sure glad about King. Going to be all right, Bill. I searched these two. Flick had the stolen money with him. They were ready for a quick getaway. You... You can't prove anything. You have the money stolen from the murdered man, and what's more, you tried to kill us because you realized we suspected you. That's right. I'll take you in for attempted murder, but I'm sure we'll soon get proof enough so that you'll both hang for the murder of Frank Leeton. No, my bullet went into the wall. You shut up, Ollie. So it was your bullet I dug out of the cabin wall, eh? Yes, that's right. We both fired at Frank, but Slick's gun fired a second before mine. Frank had his back to us, and he was falling when I fired. He's lying. Frank was killed by a bullet from the gun on the table. right on, Slick. Everything you say cinches the case against you. You see, no one but the killer knew about that gun on the table. Why, sure you... clear Tom Leighton. Yes. Slick, 
You and Miles are under arrest in the name of the Queen for the murder of Frank Leeton. All right, Bill, let's get them back to town. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Come and get them! Yes, fellas and girls, they're waiting for you. The exciting Sergeant Preston Yukon Trail cutout models are yours for the asking when you ask for delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. There's no waiting, no box tops, no coupon. They don't cost you a single extra penny. The 59 exciting Yukon Trail models come on eight different new packages of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. The swell tasting cereals shot from gun. With these models, it's just like hitting the Yukon Trail with Sergeant Preston and King. You get models of Sergeant Preston's dog sled and team of huskies. You get a Yukon Trail gold mine and a lumber camp. You get buildings and interiors. You get all kinds of Yukon animals. And these models are different. They're larger, easier to build. You'll want the complete set of eight different new Yukon trail packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the original crisp, fresh, shot-from-gun cereal that is never sold in bags or bulk. Build your complete Yukon trail right away. They're at your grocer's now. Hurry! Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of... Showdown on Shotgun Creek. A peculiar series of accidents had been happening to the miners on Shotgun Creek. And I was sure that the mining syndicate was responsible. But in trying to prove my case, I faced plenty of trouble. The climax came when I found myself trapped in a mine tunnel that was about to be blown up. With a trio of killers waiting to greet me with bullets the minute I tried to escape. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereal is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereal is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long.